Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about two more important storage parameters. They are called init trans and max trans. So, let's basically uh, take a look at how data is stored in a, a proper Oracle in the data blocks. So, this is a typical data blocks and it can come up with 8 kilobyte, 16 kilobyte, and 32 kilobyte and so on. So let's say this is an 8 kilobyte uh, data block. Then some space in st is stored. This is called block overhead. And in this area we are going to store something called row directories. table directories and then transaction directories and so on and then in the below you know the row directory these things are used for actually storing data and based on your PCT pre parameter let's say if PCT free is 20 percentage that means we can insert data up to this and this is let's say I'm assuming this is 20 percentage okay so I can keep I can insert you know the table let's say basically this table is based on table T and this table T is uh, you know data block and then basically whenever I'm doing insert into table T a row is going to be inserted here and I'm just for the and this is called a row piece okay and then I'm just assuming that you know one row is going to be inserted in one of these row pieces and similarly another row another row like this okay and eventually this is going to fail and then what is going to have you know here in the in the row directory like you know whatever the a pointer to this address is going to be stored another pointer to this address second row is going to be stored here so basically row directories are going to contain the addresses of each of these rows that is in the block and then table directories are going to contain what table is inserting to this row to this block it may happen that another table t1 can have in, can insert data to this block if table t is pretty small you know not many not many number of uh, you know rows then we can use this block to store information for another table t1 in that case in the table directories we are going to going to keep which table are basically inserting to this uh, block so in this case it will be t and t1 then another important thing is called transaction directory so transaction directory means a address where i will know which transactions are currently active or which transactions are currently updating on this block let's say some user is going to give this command called update table t so assume that you know the, you know this this block right now is con right now is you know this block contains only the data from table t so therefore whenever somebody is going to give update t and then you know set some values that means this is a you know this is basically a transaction right so this transaction whatever the transaction id is going to be stored in the transaction directory let's say the transaction id for the first user okay so this is user 1 is giving this command from a sql prompt so therefore this is a session this is a transaction and this transaction you know let's say id is 1001 so in that in the transaction directory okay so transaction directory basically just kind of an array where i'm going to store 101001 in this slot okay let's say at the same time another user u2 is giving update table t he's updating another row in that case let's say that transaction id is 1002 therefore transaction directory will contain 1002 so the parameter init trans init trans tells me how many slots are available to start with if init trans is 2 that means in my transaction directory is an array which is contain which can contain to begin with two element okay and then another parameter called max trans 
probably you must have guessed why we need max trans if say, if say that max trans is 4 in that case this array can grow up to you now this array can totally in maximum it can contain 4 transactions IDs let's say another user u3 is doing an update to another row in that case the transaction ID is 1003 in that case what's going to happen it's going to extend this array and then you will store 1003 here then let's say another user u4 is going to insert going to update another row that transaction ID is 1004 so in that case this is going to have 1004 so now let's say all things are being happening right now so 1001 is in the first uh, you know element 1002 transaction is second element so right now we have reached to the maximum number of transactions right let's say another user is going to update so user 5 is trying to update another row here then he comes here but looks like you cannot in you cannot have additional slot in the transaction directory because our max trans is 4 right so therefore this update is right now going to wait okay until any of this user 1 2 user 3 or user 4 you know do a commit so if the users do a commit here either one other one of them then user 5 can basically um, you know continue his, his transaction and then you know once this you know one is less 1001 is done so it's gone and then it will be 1005 will be there so this is how your init trans and max trans can effect you know can can basically uh, you know so so let's take an example and that will basically make your things clear you, you just take an example you create a table t and in this table t t what you do you create init trans like you know, the storage parameter when you create this table tree set the init trans and max trans to one okay and then in one session you are going to go and do an update update table t and set some value a is equal to 5 while this update is doing don't commit or do, don't do anything then try to update table t set a is equal to 6 so another row I'm going to update then you will notice that this update is going to wait see don't confuse yourself with the locking here because these are two separate rows so you know so we, we know we can we can always update two separate rows not a problem but this will wait the reason behind waiting for this is it is waiting to get a transaction slot in that in that block because whenever you are going to create a simple table like t it may happen that all the you know like if you insert five rows all the five rows will be one block okay so that means what is going to what is going on here is that init trans is one max trans is one so essentially we are waiting for the like you know the, the first transaction which is going is basically you know, that transaction is taking up the slot and then the transaction slot and then the next transaction whenever it's going to happen is going to wait so that means the rule here is that if you know like you know basically based on what kind of you know how many updates are going to happen in the application you can determine what is a good value of init trans or max trans if you do not tune this to parameters properly then you may see a lot of wait time that means you are trying to update but update is not going to happen right away and that is a reason why your your performance may be you know uh, suffer Okay. So this is all about init trans and max trans.